Hey, I'm Mike and I'm here today to talk to you about uh, wet side and dry side spacing and proper alignment. So in front of me here I have an MP40 for demonstration purposes. Um, so the first thing we want to do is make sure that we have the correct measurement of the aquarium glass. So you want to take your measurement at the top here right from inside to the very outside to make sure you get a very good accurate measurement of how thick your aquarium glass is. Um, easiest way, using a standard tape measure, you can use a ruler. Uh, if you happen to have a micrometer, that works well uh, also. So once you have your measurement, um, you'll see in your package that you will have three different size spacers, specifically for the MP40. The MP10 just has one gasket spacer, as is meant for much smaller aquariums for the most part. Uh, and then your MP60 as well will also come with three different spacers. So after you get your measurement, you're going to want to go ahead and use that measurement to reference the different size spacer um, packaging to be able to determine which one you need to choose to attach to your dry side motor. So in this instance, um, we've already pre-measured this aquarium and we know that we need the thin size spacer to properly and safely mount this dry side and wet side onto our aquarium. So there is a little notch that you can see on the spacer. The notch gets aligned with the cable on top of the motor, uh, just for a nice flush and even fit. Uh, once we have the spacer attached, the next thing we wanna do is look at where we're going to be mounting this onto our aquarium. So a couple things to note, we wanna make sure that the pump is going to be situated low enough in the system so that we're not pulling air from the surface down into the tank. We also wanna make sure that it's high enough off the bottom that we're not blasting or blowing any of the substrate all over uh, the actual aquarium, turning it into a bit of a snow globe. So once we know where we're gonna put it, uh, we can go ahead and then set our motor onto the aquarium. Now, as far as your front and back placement, um, making sure it's high enough and low enough in the system is key, but also making sure where this is actually being pointed is also quite important. So if you're, you find out where it needs to be situated, you also need to take into consideration any kind of livestock or rock work that you have, as you don't wanna aim the power head directly at either of those. You wanna to try to find a spot that's nice and free flowing uh, so that the pump can work the way it's intended to be able to cycle through the different modes that are pre-programmed uh, to provide you an optimal level of flow. So once you have the location picked out, I guess for demo we can choose here, we'll make sure that our cord for our dry side motor is oriented upwards like so. Uh, and then we also want to make sure that our wet side assembly is nice and secure. Now, I didn't ref mention this, but we'll make sure that the pump uh, is actually turned off during this portion. With the pump turned on, um, trying to either uncouple or recouple the pump does not really work well. Uh, it can be a little dangerous if your fingers are really close to the wet side, so we recommend that you do keep the pump powered off when you're either uncoupling or decoupling the wet side and or dry side assembly. So once you have everything situated, you get it roughly uh, magnetized together onto the tank. The next thing you'll wanna do is uh, go ahead and secure the dry side motor. So again, the pump is still off, but it is coupled onto the aquarium. So about an inch or so above the dry side motor, we can attach some of our hanging tabs. Um, we'll go ahead and use these. They're just 3M tape on one side, so you can peel off the backing. Find the, lo the location or placement that you want, the hanging tab. You'll stick your hanging tab and then use one of the uh, zip ties that come in the package to secure the cable to that hanging tab. Uh, now, how many you use is up to you. Uh, we recommend, I'd probably say at least two just to be on the safe side. You can do one directly above the pump and then maybe one towards the back side as you cleanly route the cable. Um, but again, if you wanna use more, you can use more. I don't really recommend to use less because in the event that, that something happens and the two halves do separate, you wanna make sure that you have enough strength there to properly support uh, that dry side motor in the event that it does happen to either slide off or, or separate from the wet side assembly. Um, so once we know we have the right placement, then we have uh, the pump alignment is set up properly. We have the pump secured with the cable ties uh, and mounting tabs. The last thing that we want to do uh, is just some final adjustments, again, making sure that our wet side assembly and our dry side look nice and secure. Uh, as long as they are, we can go ahead, we can power our pump on and gradually turn up our flow. 
Um, if you hear any funny noises or you hear any a little bit of maybe vibration, that may be because the wet side assembly isn't perfectly aligned to the dry side motor. So a good way to do that is just keep the pump at a lower rate of flow. Make sure you have one hand on the dry side motor, take another hand on the wet side assembly, and just kind of rotate in a clockwise motion. You should be able just by feeling to be able to tell if the wet side assembly and the dry side assembly are properly aligned. Um, sometimes just eyeballing it with water in the aquarium does make it a little tricky. It distorts your, your view of the actual wet side assembly. So it's typically best take two hands, just support that motor, give it a couple of twists or re-shimmy it back into position um, and the pump will quiet down and operate as it should with very, very minimal vibration and almost virtually no noise at all. Um, after doing so, you should be good to go. And that'll conclude spacing and alignment.